I'm going to show you how we can use the finite difference method to solve an elliptic partial differential equation problem. Uh, the problem that we're going to look at is a problem that comes from fluid dynamics, although the actual application isn't that important, but it makes an interesting um, uh, application to look at. Um, the differential equation that we're going to solve today is, is uh, partial squared phi partial x squared plus partial squared phi partial y squared is equal to zero, which is given right here. And that describes for the, that, that's an equation for the potential phi um, of the flow. And the problem that we look at has a source and two sources and two sinks um, situated at opposite corners of this uh, square box. Um, and the source and sink are described by the boundary conditions given. So phi on the left side is y, phi on the bottom is minus x, phi on the right is minus 1 minus y, and phi on the top is 1 minus x. And once we solve for phi in the middle of the domain, so for example, in the middle here, once we know phi as a function of x and y, that's really the goal, then we can take partial derivatives of phi to get the velocity field. So u is the x component of velocity and v is the y component of velocity, and we can solve for those once we have the, the potential. Okay, but really, if you think about this from a numerical methods point of view, we have a second order differential equation we need to solve. Um, it's an elliptic partial differential equation because we know it's, it's kind of like a boundary value problem. And um, that's what we need to do. So the first step to solve this is to discretize. Now, this equation just has two spatial derivatives, um, the two second derivatives with respect to x and y. Um, and those we're going to discretize with our normal standard um, central finite difference. Now before we do that, let's talk about how we're going to represent phi. And the notation I'm going to use is phi ij, which this means we're at the ith x location and the jth y location. So if I know i and j, I know exactly where I am within this, this um, domain that I've specified. So that's what we're going to be solving for. And once I have that notation, I can approximate the derivatives. So partial squared phi partial x squared, I can approximate using um, phi at i minus 1 minus 2 phi ij. So I forgot the j over here. Um, plus phi i plus 1 j all over dx squared. And that's our standard finite difference operator. Um, you'll notice that we're varying the i index. And we're varying the i index because we want to know how phi changes in the x direction. The second derivative of phi with respect to x is going to tell us how phi changes in the x direction. So that's what we do there. Partial squared phi partial y squared is going to be exactly the same thing, but we're going to vary the j index. So we're going to have phi i j minus 1 minus 2 phi i j plus phi i j plus 1. And this is all divided by dy squared. OK, so now I'm going to plug these into the ODE, sorry, the PDE. And if I do that, I can write this as um, phi i minus 1 minus 2 phi i j. forgot the j again plus phi i plus 1j all over dx squared plus phi i j minus 1 minus 2 phi i j plus phi i j plus 1 all over dy squared is equal to 0. And if I simplify my life a little bit and I let delta x equal delta y, and therefore that means I have to have square grid cells. When I actually discretize this, I can simplify my life because that makes the delta x squared and delta y squared cancel out, and it simplifies my final equation, which I can write as phi i minus 1 j 
plus phi i plus 1 j plus phi i j minus 1 plus phi i j plus 1 minus 4 phi i j is equal to 0. Okay, and that is what I would refer to as our discretized partial differential equation for this problem. Uh, the next step is we're going to write that in a matrix, and that I'm going to do in the next video.